Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to the first Saturday in February. This is the Lord's Prayer, where every week for the last five weeks, we have been speaking to the various mountains of influence. We've spoken to religion, family, business, government, media, and now is the day that we get to talk about education. Now, for me, education is something that is close to my heart because, you know, my father's side of the family, they're all in education in some form, some fashion, some way, either they're ministers of education, they're teachers, principals, whatsoever it is. Um, so it's kind of in like my bloodstream. And the other reason I like education, I worked in higher education for 15 years, you know, higher education is completely different from K through 12. And there's a lot of politics, there's a lot of game playing, there's a lot of things that happen that don't necessarily need to happen. And one of the things with education that we need to be concerned about is making sure that those that are teachers, those that are in administration, that they are really operating from a place of wisdom, a place of knowledge and understanding, and that they are intercessors for those that they are in care of, right? A lot of times we spend so much time in school that, you know, that's a place that is like a third leg. You have your mother, your father, right? And when we're talking K through 12, you have your mother and your father and you have the school system. That's kind of like your third leg of support. And, you know, our teachers have to be, not have to be, but they, they should be responsible for how children develop because they spend so much time with them. So today we're going to talk about all of that. We're going to pray for it. Um, and I have Pastor Willie Carley with me today, and I'm excited to hear what the Lord has to say through him. We met, um, I think it was a couple of years ago, where my friend Charna uh, she was being ordained as a minister and I came to her church for the first time and met you. And I think ever since then, any kind of function that she's invited us to, whether she's been preaching or uh, teaching or any, anything like most recently, the, or the consecration in Florida, you know, anything that she invites me to, I always want to support her. And this is how I met this powerful man of God. He's not like your regular hooping and hollering and carrying on, right? And that's something that I really enjoy because not everybody's built the same. And that's, that's important. People need to see variations of how the gospel is shared, how the word is taught, how it's preached. So I'm excited to hear what he has to say today. And I'm going to turn it over to him. Well, thank you, Joy. I appreciate it. My name is Dr. Willie K. Carley. Uh, I'm the senior pastor for Tabernacle of Faith Christian Fellowship located in Newburgh, New York. You know, I always see myself as a preacher. Amen. <laughs> and, you know, I teach and I preach. Amen. Yes. We thank God for that. I'm not a really hooper, but guess what? It comes out. And yeah. so yeah. when the Lord allows that way to come out, we go forth full fledged. And then if he teaches full fledged, guess what? We go out that way full. So we leave by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right. Yeah. To make sure God do what he do. Amen. So I'm Amen. happy to be here. Happy to be here. And you've been a beacon of light. Thank God for you. I appreciate you. And thank you for this platform. Beautiful platform. Uh, just stay encouraged. Amen. And let's Amen. go forth in the Amen. Lord. That's right. So do you want me to start or are you going to? Yeah, you can start. You can start talking about education. Okay. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, when it comes down to education, uh, that's always been a passion of mine. It's, it's something that I've seen as a young youth that was of necessity. Now, I'm not the sharpest knife and nor am I the dullest, but I'm in the drawer. Right. right? So yeah. I always tell people, are you in the drawer? And they said, yes. Because we, we throw away the dull knives. Yeah. And so yeah. we don't we don't use those. So at least if you're in the drawer, you might not be the sharpest. But you're still <laughs> but you're not the dullest. <laughs> yeah. So you know, that's when we talk about education and, and and your vision behind that calling it a mountain. Yeah, it is something that you gotta work through and you gotta work over. And there's some parts of that mountain that's gonna be steeper than others, right. but it, it's not about quitting. 
It's about persevering and moving through. So I want to share a couple of scriptures with you and, and, and talk about education from a biblical perspective, how God has shared it with me. And I, I pray that this will touch somebody to get an understanding that we have been built, we have been called to teach. We have been called to educate ourselves formally or informally. Right. And I refer to formally as in school, through seminary, through edu you know the formal mm -hmm. education of the system, department of education, or informally through, the, through, through trainers and people and, and mentors and educators who take the time to uh, educate and to fill people uh, with word and knowledge. So I believe that's God's wisdom and that's God's call for our lives. So with that being said, I just like to open up in a prayer and then I'll get started. Nice. Father, we thank you for your mercy, your love, and your strength. Now, God, have your way in this place. God, reveal you so that we can understand, God, the power of the Holy Ghost. And Father, you are God of gods, and you're all-knowing. And I pray, oh God, that we'll learn to be all-knowing through you. Strengthen us, lead us, and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So there are several scriptures that I'll, I'll, I'll talk about. I'm not going to read them to you, but I'll mm -hmm. reference them as we go through. And I start everything in Genesis because I believe we look at our foundation. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, and so when it comes to education, one of the things I look at as a uh, as an uh, aspiring charter school developer, because we're in the midst of, of developing a charter school, you look at the family tree and you say, wow. Just like you mentioned, you said you come from a, a line of educators. Right. So therefore, education is a part of your system, mm -hmm. is a part of you. But not everyone has been fortunate to be a part of that type of line. And they desire to educate, they desire to know, they desire to do all these things, but they may not have the root or the foundation in their lives to help them to get over that mountain. Yeah. Amen right mm -hmm. so we we need to find ways and strategies to get over that mountain and say okay yeah i gotta climb this thing and i i don't know everything but if i start if i begin to move so we find in genesis 1 and 26 that god has created us in his image so when yeah. god created man he created us in his image and when we look at the image of god Amen. One of the main things we find, uh, this word called omniscient. And so God is all knowing. Yeah. And because God is all knowing, he has all the information, all the knowledge that we need. And so because we fall short of God's omniscience and God's knowledge, Paul said, we see through a glass darkly. Yeah. You know, so we don't, we don't know everything. We might think we know everything. <laughs> But we don't. But we don't. Right. We don't. And so this is this is a biblical promise and a biblical principle. If we humble ourselves and seek his face, then God will open up the windows of heaven. Then God will answer us. Then God will provide us with the information. God will provide us with wisdom and knowledge and give right. us revelation concerning whatever. It's not limited to scripture. Is not limited to just a business. It could be knowledge concerning anything, wisdom and understanding. When we go to the book and we look at Solomon and how God blessed him, mm -hmm. it wasn't just in one vein. It was a lot of veins. Yep. So we have to educate ourselves and understand that God will give us the knowledge, but are we willing to seek his face for it? Are we willing to humble ourselves? Are, are we hungering after uh, that knowledge? Yeah. You know, the, the, the scriptures tells us, amen, the, uh, our, our lady wisdom, you know, seek her, run after her, amen. Mm -hmm. You know, so that means that if we want knowledge, if we want to be educated, we got to have a desire, we got to have a hunger, we got to have a willingness to humble ourselves and acknowledge that I don't know, and then being willing to sit at the feet of Gamel, sit at the feet of Paul, sit at the feet of an educator and an elder. And according to the scripture, God says, the older shall teach the younger. younger. Mm -hmm. So we have to be willing to sit under the feet of those who may not be old in age, right. but they are old right. in knowledge. They right. have right. the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And now they're filling us 
the ones who don't have the knowledge. So and here's then something on, on here's, the, go ahead. Something interesting that you said, um, we don't ever think about knowledge in ed, like even in the education system, the K through 12 higher education, we're never thinking about it in a revelatory way, right? Here's the textbook, read the textbook, and this is the information you should know. Let's not expand ourselves beyond what they give us, but just stay in the lane and in the vein in which they want us to be. And yeah. I think that's pretty detrimental as now you're saying it like, my my brain only knows one or two ways to operate in math, right? Like if you have a math problem, now they're coming out with all these ways to do the same math problems we used to do before. And I'm sitting there like, my, my mind is just like, wow. Why recreate the wheel, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, people, but people have been doing the same one plus one in a, and showing children in a different way and you're kind of like, well, they never showed it to me like that. I don't know that way, right? But we never put place ourselves, like you're saying, in, in a position to receive that revelation, to receive that, that difference in knowledge, right? Of what they're just giving us or streamlining to us. Well, that shows gaps in education, gaps in training, gaps in right. uh, uh, communication. Because when it came down to Common Core and I was teaching my sons and, you know, going over their homework. Right. Yeah, I was like, carry the one, you know, <laughs> we're doing this way. Right. <laughs> that's what I know. Exactly. And they were like, no, dad, that's not the way they do it. But if they would have educated me on how to do that, if mm -hmm. I would have learned how to do math the way that they do math, right, then right. I would be more of an asset versus a liability <laughs> to my kids. <laughs> right? That's we're good. more of an asset so it, it goes back to the system having its limitations yeah, and yeah. not having the ability to expand but we we have to as parents say okay one or two things is happening and i told my son i said look i don't know the way you're doing it let me do it my way and see if we come out with the same answer and right. you work through your way and then let's go back to the book this is what i told to my children go back to the book and let's follow their course of action and right, then right. see where we messed up. Now, what's the difference between just giving up and quitting is this. Instead of just giving up and quitting and say, I don't know, I took the time, I humbled myself, yep. and then I went through not the scriptures, <laughs> the book. Right. And I call on the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I, I took his textbook. Okay, page one says, <laughs> put it like this, do it like that. We read through it and we took time yep. and we were patient and we worked through it. I still don't have it, but he had it and he, he passed and he's doing, they're all through high got school it. now. <laughs> right. <laughs> they're, they're on their way. So the key is, and, and as we're talking about this mountain, you have to be willing to humble yourself and you gotta be willing to be diligent uh, one of the areas I want to talk to you about is in uh, Proverbs, the ninth chapter, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it talks about Lady Wisdom. It says in verse number one, wisdom has built her house. She has hooted out of seven pillars. I, I want to discuss those seven pillars. And it ties into directly what we just talked about concerning right. Common Core, concerning Department of Ed, and how it affects us as individuals. From the scriptures. From this is the scriptures. Be powerful. I already know it. <laughs> so verse number two says this. She has killed her beasts. She has mingled her wine. She has also furnished her table. The key word that is 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 uh trending there, and we see a pattern that's connecting she, she, she. Right. It didn't say the government, it didn't <laughs> say the teacher. It says she, the individual, the individual, we have to take initiatives. We have to do it on our own. We can't wait until somebody else to do it. She didn't wait for somebody else to kill her beast. She did it herself. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> she didn't wait for somebody else to mingle her wine. She did it herself. She, I'm taking notes. she didn't wait to somebody who furnished her table. Guess what? She did it herself. I didn't wait 
until my sons went to school. I took the book, open up page number one. Right. It says this. Let's do this. Right. And we walk through it ourselves. Which makes sense. Right. So when we're talking about education and growth Mm -hmm. in any, this is applicable in any area of our lives. If we take the initiatives ourselves instead of waiting on others, don't leave the the basketball game in the hands of the ref. Right. <laughs> don't don't leave the I, I'm an MMA uh, MMA uh, uh, fighter. I watch MMA. Mm-hmm. They always say, "Don't leave it in the hands of the ref." You go out there and you do your business, right? So that you can get your hand raised at the end. Yeah. The same thing happens here. Let's stop waiting for the system. Mm-hmm. And let's begin to do it ourselves. That's good. You have we take initiative. Well, amen. <laughs> we <laughs> take initiatives. So it, it says that is that's one pillar. You take initiative. Yeah. And then we find the second pillar. She has sent forth her maidens. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. So she sent forth her maidens first. It represents preparation mm. go the advanced party set it up so when i get there guess what now she's in worship and the highest places and we go back to scripture when we find the highest places it's usually those places where people put idolatries idols and they go to a place of worship but wisdom say she sent forth her maidens to set up the atmosphere to set up right. her place of worship so when she get there, there are no barriers. Yeah. There are no stall. Right straight through it. Mm-hmm. Man, let's That's go good. to work. Right? Same thing we teach in our churches. Deacons, go set up the lights. Go turn on the air or the heat this time right. of year. <laughs> <laughs> turn on the heat. <laughs> get everything set up. So when we come in, we come in to worship. Right. We don't come There's in to warm up. Mm-hmm. We don't come in to get started. Right. We preach and we teach. When you come to church, you ought to be ready. You ought to already be on fire. You should have yep. started when you got up this morning. Got up, right. <laughs> right? Worshiping in the car on the way. On the way. Right. Mm-hmm. Same it's thing true. happens with education. Yep. Don't wait for somebody else. Prepare yourself. And if you don't know what to do, find somebody who does know something that, about that. And then guess what? Help educate you so now you can move faster through it. Mm-hmm. These are constructs or building blocks. This is why, uh, you know, one of the terms I learned as in building a charter school is this: you got to have vertical alignment and horizontal alignment. Yes. Vertical alignment talks whatever you learn in kindergarten. You should build on that in first grade, and build on that second grade, so forth, so on. So now you've got your high school diploma. Now. You, the foundation that you've built through your elementary or your high school years, guess what? In college, you're going to use that. We're not going back. I'm not going back to show right. you one plus one is two. It's two. You should know that by now. Mm-hmm. You should know it by now. But it took initiative. It took your own preparation time. You carving out time to study. You carving out time not to be distracted. The same thing happens with us spiritually. If we want to know God, we want to grow in God. And we want to grow in education. We got to carve out time for God. Yeah. We got to have our own devotional. We got to have our own time. We read the word because that's his instruction for us. And then we prepare ourselves. Hey, man, sit back. Right. Relax. Put your books, everything together. Close the doors. Silence the phones. <laughs> <laughs> <Right? Not. laughs> prepare your atmosphere. Just like in praise and worship, we prepare the atmosphere before we start bringing forth the word. Now the atmosphere is is set. Speak God. Right. The same thing happens in education. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't sit down or lay in your bed talking about you doing coursework because you fall asleep. Now you you (laughs) messed up. So now you got to inconvenience yourself. Sit up in a chair. Mm -hmm. Don't feel good. I want to lay back. But your mind says, no, you can't because we have some work to do. Mm -hmm. See? So, but I mean, it's just like when um the spies went into Canaan to spy out the land of milk and honey. 
Like, and 10 of them came back and were like, no, it's not a good idea. But two of them were committed and said, no, we can go, we can, we can take this. It's the same idea. Like, you can't, <clears throat> you can't tell me I'm going to go into, so I'm in a master's degree that I had no interest of being in because my background is in art and creation. So I'm doing a master's in business. And I went into this degree. I looked at every possible school. And what I did was I thought about what I wanted, what would work best for me. I knew I needed something online. I knew I needed something that didn't have a, a grade formula. So the A through F, but it was just pass fail. I knew finances needed to be low. I knew, so I scouted out a school on the things that I knew would make this easy for me to commit to. So I wouldn't give up. And to be honest, this is my last six months. <laughs> so like, if we actually do the work and do the preparation, like you're saying, like how much easier is that going to be for us to enter in? It makes it a whole lot easier. It makes it a whole lot easier. When you go back and you talk about <clears throat> when Moses sent the, the 10 to spy out the mm -hmm. land of Canaan, right? Think about the two that came back so we can do this. Right. And why was their, their, their um, affirmation so powerful versus the others? It wasn't because they didn't see the same thing. They saw the same thing. Right. But where did they put their trust? Right. They didn't put their trust in men. Right. They put their trust in God. Right. So there's like, we can do this, but they're not leaning on their own. Right. They're leaning on what God has planted inside of them and what has been revelated to them. So we don't trust in our own devices, our own strength. Father, mm -hmm. I'm about to, I'm about, to, I'm the, I am the dullest knight. <laughs> he has sharpen to come me. and sharpen me up. Sharpen me. That's right. Sharpen me. And guess what he does? He sharpens us. Yeah. Yeah. Let's be willing to go to work. <laughs> let's be willing to do the work. Let's, let's chop it up. Let's be willing right. to be used. Right. Cut the meat, cut the bones, cut all right. this right. stuff. Guess what? You, you're going to have to work after that and be willing yeah. to work. So when we look at this lady, wisdom, hey, she's not afraid of working. She takes the initiative. She prepared herself. And then in verse number five, she says, come now, eat. It says, come eat of my bread and drink of my wine, drink of the wine, which I have mingled. After she did the work, mm -hmm. after she did the preparatory, after she did that, she says, now you come and eat. That's good. She's not a consumer. She's yeah. a she's the head and not the tail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's the lead. She's the provider. She represents Jehovah Jireh. If we begin to do the things of God, God will make us the head and not the tail. So when we educate ourselves, we become the head and not the tail. Yeah. The more you learn, the less people can fool you. Yes, very true. The more you learn, the more you can be involved in your finances, in your world, in the things. And so when you, you may not read everything, but you said, wait, wait, this don't sound right. Read, read. Let's, let's go back over that. What was that? Right. Now I'm not and the you, sharpest you can, knife. You can, tr you can trump all <laughs> false doctrines. The more, you know, the more, you know, you can tell those who labor among you by them being there by you having knowledge of them, by mm -hmm. you understanding that they, we are like-minded. So when somebody speak outside of that doctrine or outside of those laws and those, right. the will of God, you say, wait a minute, oh, I don't know where you got that from because the scripture tells me that I am wonderfully made. So when yeah. you call me outside my name, yeah. guess what? That's not me. You got, you're mixing me up with the wrong person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen, saints. <Sam. laughs> you're mixing me up with the wrong person. My name is Dr. Willie K. Carly. Right. I am highly favored. Right. Amen. And so we walk in the things of God and not in the things of men. That's so right. I stand on the foundations of Jesus Christ. And so now every demon has to back up. Every man has to back up. Every thought has to back up. But this comes out of wisdom. And so when we educate ourselves formally or informally, 
Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you get a degree from Harvard or you get a degree from uh, a a two year in a, uh, a two year institution. Yeah. Guess what? You had to go through English. You had to go through math. Yes. Those foundational things so that you can build upon that. So you found you found a school with a curriculum that fits you, not right. society. Mm -hmm. When I was going through my master's program and I was I was working in the Department of Veterans Affairs at a hospital and I was putting together a continuity program mm -hmm. and just so happened I, I had to pick an elective and I was going through my master's in uh, emergency management and I said uh, I want to study this right here with uh, continuity planning and they said well that's not part of your curriculum I said well I want to take that and remove the elective you have <laughs> and put that yeah, as yeah. my elective. And then the lady said, oh, okay, you can do that. I said, thank you. Right. Because I had to build the program that I want. <laughs> there you go. It fits me. It fits me and my mission and my vision and what God has given me, not what God has given you, because right. that's your world. This is mine. And mm -hmm. now I adhere to the rules because I know the rules. Right. Knowledge. I had to find out the rules. Can I substitute this? Yes or no? Right. Mm -hmm. you can. Okay. Now I went back. Yes, I can substitute it and then educated her. Mm. Now I done poured it. Now you come and eat of me. Wow. So now I'm telling you, <laughs> mm -hmm. not you telling me. So now I've taken control. Control. Right. That Relief. is good. But it came out of knowledge. It came out of wisdom and understanding and, and humbling myself, but willing to move forward and not scared to move forward. It, you know, and you know, no disrespect to, to ministry, Colin Powell said this. He said, you got to be willing. He used, I don't know if I can use this word or not, but I'll just use this word. Mm -hmm. he, he said, you got to be willing to tick somebody off. Right. You got to be willing to tick somebody off. Right. And so when it comes down to your education, you got to be willing to tick somebody off. Teacher, I don't understand that. Please, Please go back over it. Go back over it. Where can I find more information? I'm taking control of it so that I can leave educated, right? I And just as another example, and I hope I'm not going off track no, no, too no, much. Fine. You know, I was in the military and I was going through nursing school and uh, the, the other students that, you know, the, the peer group I was hanging with, let me put it right. that way. This is important too. You have different peers, different students. Mm -hmm. You have your A's, you have your B's, you have your C's, and you have your D's. We didn't have the F's because they were removed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Expel. In that category, yeah, you get you get removed from the program. So I didn't fall below a C, you know. Right. right. So I'm sitting there going like, my Lord, God, I you know, why am I not getting the B's and the A's like mm -hmm. these this top 1%? So I went to my instructor and I said, hey, I, I, I'm having some issues because my grades aren't is where I think they should be, where right. I think they should be, not her. Mm -hmm. He said, no, you're doing fine. No, you know, I'm doing fine. <laughs> and I said, well, it, you know, it depends on what you mean by fine. I'm passing. I'm, I'm yeah. happy with that. However, I'm trying to get the A's and the B's, get up, move my grade point average up. Mm -hmm. Willie, don't worry about that. You're doing fine. And so I got mad and I not loud with her, but right. I, you know, I got stern. I said, I want to learn. I want to see what I'm doing wrong. Wrong. Mm -hmm. So I can improve. This woman got upset with me and, and, you know, got flustered and she turned red and she, uh, she made that sound. Right. And I sat there and then she gave me this book. It's called the Lippincott. Mm. Oh, okay. What is this? Right. This is where you can dig deeper into your nursing plan and begin to develop more of a proactive action plan to help whatever disease process or whatever is going on. I said, oh, now this book, I literally, I'm not exaggerating, had to be like five, thick. six inches thick. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, see, <laughs> I asked for it. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> Here it is. And so I had enough in me on top of what was going on, mm -hmm. took that Lippincott, did my work that was the core for the work, 
Now I said, okay, I did all, now let me go into this and see what it's talking about, diabetes, mm -hmm. and how they break it down, and what we should look for in the lab, what we should look for on the floor, mm -hmm. how we can manage it on another level, other resources and things people can do. So when I opened my not well, my knowledge and my understanding of that came out, right. I said, oh my God, no wonder I'm only getting a C. <laughs> I'm missing <laughs> I'm missing out on so much information. <laughs> I didn't have all the information. Yeah. Right. So I changed. I wrote, I, I, I feel I did my, my coursework and I was doing it, but now I'm adding all these things to it. Now I'm a consistent B. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I say B. <laughs> I mean, I didn't get the A yet, but I'm 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 solid B now. I'm in I'm the B's. <laughs> and so now C. I have to figure out like. All right, how to move from the bees to this? And then I began to go a little deeper. I said, well, mm -hmm. you know, I went here. Now I'm talking with the A students, networking. Mm -hmm. Hey, do you use this? And do you like this? And no, man, I do this and I do that. And I said, oh, where'd you get that from? So now we're talking, we're dialoguing, right? right. So now I incorporated what I took out of their head. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I stuck a straw in their head. <laughs> took out all their knowledge. You siphoned it. <laughs> The whole nine and, and, and encompassed it with what I've already had, what she had, and now I'm rocking with the A's. Mm -hmm. Now, because I started late, they got the accolades of, you know, the top 10%. <laughs> but if they would have fell out of- We're sword, in the 11%. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. If they would have stumbled, they would have tripped. Right, <laughs> you right. <know>? You right <laughs> there. Oh, so I, I said all that to say this, if we take the initiative, we do the work, we'd be willing to do the work and guess what? It will profit. And now you, they get to come to your table and eat of you. Right. You can be the head. You can not be the tail. So we find it, it says in this in verse number six, now we get to really preach to the masses, right? It says, forsake the foolish hmm. <laughs> and live and go in the way of understanding so that spoke to my life mm. all right well you can't sit up and watch tv <laughs> why not <laughs> i willie you can't hang out with your friends good friends right but they're not operating on the level that you want to operate so mm -hmm. i have to start surrounding myself with the a group yeah mm -hmm. When we're building our charter school, I have to surround myself with educators, not my friends. Right. Love mm -hmm. you, man. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> I need right? a different group. Right. I need a different group on this mm -hmm. one. And, and one of the things uh, I'm going to reach out to him, hopefully, he'll see this video. Uh, no, he won't see it before we talk to him. Guys, I'll see him tomorrow on Sunday. Oh, okay. uh, uh, a charter school, uh, mm -hmm. Bishop G.E. Livingston. He's in um, <clears throat> Decatur, uh, Decatur. Illinois or uh, Chicago, oh, okay. something like that. He's up mm -hmm. there. Anyway, long story short, he has a charter school. I'm going to ask him to be my mentor. Right. He's the executive director. I've never been an executive director. So guess what? I need to link up with somebody who's doing the job. Right. <laughs> Not someone who has a good idea <laughs> or what they think. <laughs> no. See, and that's why people say it's important that you have your tribe like every time you transition every time you shift into something new you need a tribe that can help feed you and pour into you what you need to do what it is that god assigned you to do there you go right mm -hmm. there you go so what did the other 10 miss that the other two received evidently it was something that was poured into them that they saw through different lenses right wait a minute I see all the people, I see all the things you're talking about, but I look through the lens of God. Yeah. So now God has revelated me and says, we can do this if we trust in him. He said to Moses, I'm going to lead you to the land of milk and honey. Honey. Mm -hmm. Guess what? If God said it, he's going to do it. He'll do it. And if God says we are made in his image and guess what? His image is knowledge. Guess what? So we should have knowledge. But because of the fall of sin, because of where we're at, now we got to read. Now we got to study. Now we got to work by the sweat of our brow. <laughs> <laughs> right? 
right? <laughs> but are you willing to work? Scripture is built on husbandry, farming. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, it's built on farming, sowing and reaping, right? Amen. Weather, seasons, time, yeah. things like that. And when you find a good farmer, it's somebody who's out there working the field. Yeah, yeah. They're not just right throwing up. seeds out there and just hoping. You're not just throwing seeds, you know? right. just planting seeds. Right. Right. Filling the ground, you know. Yeah. Prep work. The prep work, doing tilling the ground. That's mm -hmm. the prep work. He's doing all of those things. So when it comes to our education, we got to forsake foolishness. You know, no disrespect mm -hmm. to uh, different cultures. And I've I heard this too many times. And, and when my kids try to, well, dad, it's because I'm black. That has zero to do with it. You know how many been, many black people are educated? You know how many African-Americans and people, uh, minorities of different races are educated? You got to be willing to educate yourself. Yeah. You got to be willing to go beyond the foolishness of this world. Amen. Yeah. You got to be willing to do that. And so when we find ourselves in scripture, it says, leave that foolish thing just behind yeah put sure. it behind you seek understanding if that door don't open for you as you said what you did right. find another right find another mm -hmm. find another and then guess what eventually you're going to find that door it's going to open to you the yeah. bible says god will make room for your gift yes so you want to understand guess what it's coming on a silver platter Yes. But you got to be willing to search through it. Delay does not mean deny. Right. Amen. So <clears throat> we find in verse number seven, he says, he that reproveth the scorner getteth to himself shame. All right. And he that rebuketh the wicked man getteth himself a blind. You're fighting and contending with the stupid. You're fighting and contending with those don't even know. You're fighting and contending when those are hearers of the word. Not the doers, doers of the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stop fighting with the ones who are just running their mouth. <laughs> What's the people statement? who are doing the work. And then you will overcome this mountain. Yeah. They will show you how to maneuver through. It will show you the, the pits and the falls and the traps and all the things. That is the beauty behind a book. A book is somebody who has hundreds of hours of whatever education. Mm -hmm. They put it in one little book, a hundred pages, a thousand pages. Yeah. All of that they've learned and all of that resources they brought from others. And now you turn one page and you receive. Receive all of that. All of that. Don't be afraid to read. Mm, mm, mm. Sometimes I read and my eyes start watering. And all <laughs> I do is go like this. I continue to read. Because you got to train yourself. Yeah. You got to discipline yourself. Yeah. We are disciples of Christ. And guess what? If we go back and read the disciples and look at their lives, sometimes Jesus rebuked them. I, I just went through a study and I'm looking at it. I said, mm. wow. It was a time where they said they didn't know. They didn't know. And now we find a time when we get further in the scriptures, we find that the disciples, Jesus tells them about a, a parable. And now they go like this. Oh, we, they perceive that he was talking about John the Baptist. Oh, now mm -hmm. they understand he was. So no longer as he's breaking it down to him as a kindergarten. Yeah. Now they understand more and more as he begins to talk. Right. Oh, talking about this. Got it. There's still some times where he has to break it down, but now mm -hmm. they're receiving it more. They're understanding more because it more. Mm -hmm. they're walking with him more. So if we walk with people in our areas that we want to be knowledge, have knowledge of, mm -hmm. you have to have a mentor. You have to have somebody who's educated. You got to have somebody who's doing that. You got to be able to see somebody who's working in that area and yep. over to overcome this mountain. Yep. So we have to be willing, as it says, don't argue with the scorner. Don't get with, you know, that, that the wicked person and all that stuff. Don't allow them to, to take you away from your work. Go back to Nehemiah. We can't come down. One was standing watching over while the other worked. 
Mm. We got to have somebody standing over us, the Holy Ghost, God Himself, while we work. That's our accountability part, man. Guess what? Your family may not be there Mm -hmm. because it wasn't your vision. They sleep. (laughs) Your friends may not be there. 95% of the time. (laughs) Yes, yes. Your friends are not there because they're at home taking care of their family and their business. Yeah. Oh, God, watch over me. Mm -hmm. Strengthen me while I do the work, while I study, while I do this, while I do that. And then he's going to bless you. And then he encourages you. Then he strengthens you. Now you get a, you get to go out and impart your knowledge. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And if you will, if I could take a real segment, you know, that is part of your growth too. Because the more you impart your knowledge, the more you empty yourself and the more God can fill you. Yeah. And the yeah. more you become skillful with your tools. Yeah. I learned, I learned the terminology and I've been wearing it out for the last couple of weeks. Generous <laughs> orthodoxy. Right. I sat there all like, I don't know what that means. But I, right. when I was listening to the instructor, I began to glean that he's talking about mercy. Mm. This mercy that comes with discipline. God doesn't allow you to get away from it, but he lessens the pain. He lessens the punishment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when we understand that God sees us and, and, and things happen in our lives and now he's like, wow, God, you let me skate. He said, I didn't let you skate, but I had mercy on you. Mm. We don't we don't escape zero, nothing. He mm-hmm. just had mercy. Yes, he did. Yes. So now when I sit underneath that instructor, I listen and I'm learning. Now I'm exercising. Now I preach and I teach from that perspective about generous orthodox. orthodox. Mm. And it talks about the discipline, but yet the mercies of God, the judgments of God, but yet the mercies of God all in one. Yeah. So, so when we, when we find ourselves arguing with people and fighting with those who don't know, man, you're, you're just spitting in the wind. <laughs> you're fighting, for, you're arguing, you losing. Save that breath. You may need it one day, right? It says in verse number eight, reprove not the, uh, the scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man and he will love thee. So I rather deal with the wise than the unwise. Yeah. How can I rebuke a wise man unless I'm in the wise man's man category? And so I receive this not as in rebuke, as in like you're being disparaging. Right. Now, as the Greeks do, they argue a point. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. You No, no, that's not what it said. It said this. Right. So let's go back to the scripture or let's go back to this book and, and see what they, the philosopher said. Right. And we, so now we can argue points. Mm-hmm. So it's a rebuke because I'm coming against you, but I'm not coming against you as in being disparaging. Right. I'm coming to against you to argue point for clarity mm-hmm. because I want to leave with understanding. So if I'm sitting among the wise, mm-hmm. I want understanding. You were going to say something? Yeah. So, you know, um, what just came to mind when we either come back to Christ or give our lives to Christ the first time, you know, we find that a lot of people in church, they get stuck in like this limbo where they don't grow. They don't get past, let's just say the spiritual milk. And, you know, I find that you can't even have conversations like this because people aren't reading their Bible. There you go. Right. So you can't encourage one another. You can't try to gain understanding you can't um help one another to know more if nobody's reading the bible and and so it's crazy to me that we're not like as you're saying this i'm like yeah we should be talking more to each other about the bible instead of what people were doing on tiktok (laughs) like you know know what i mean like that's how that's how we're gonna get to know god and know his characteristics and his desires for us and know what it is that's going to get us to quote unquote the next level right i i I, my mind is literally blown that's why i'm sitting here like we should be doing this (laughs) that's that's revelation and and that's what the spirit of the lord does when we we when we focus our actions on the things of god Mm -hmm. god moves in his agenda (laughs) right not ours that's right right so we're talking about education. 
And so we re related to the Bible and church. People don't grow because they're not educated in them, so they're not reading the word. Mm -hmm. And because they're not hanging around the individuals, the pastors, the leaders that are leading and reading the word and growing in it, they're not there. I, I tell our parishioners all the time, sit at my feet, not because I'm trying to be Lord over you, because I'm studying the word, come to Bible study. Yeah. And let's yeah. hear what the Lord says. You have a question, ask. Mm -hmm. We rebuke, we contend, we can talk. You can come back and say, Pastor, I don't agree with that. I said, well, right. okay, so maybe I'm wrong because I'm not perfect. Yeah, yeah. Let me hear your perspective. Well, I see it from this, I think, and then we go into it. And right. if they're right, they're right. And I said, you know what? You're right. Mm -hmm. You know, however, does it line up from Genesis to Revelation? Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't line up to Genesis, Genesis to Revelation, I don't receive it. It can't be just, mm -hmm. it says this. No, no, no. This is where we find with a problem uh, that happened with the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. The Sadducees and the Pharisees, their, their organization or their, their, their structure came out of the 400 years of silence where God was not revelating. They had the word of God. They had the commandments. They had, mm -hmm. you know, every Deuteronomy, numbers, amen. They had all of that, but they, they did not have the revelation. Right. So John the Baptist began to preach about this man called Jesus. And when John the Baptist began to talk about Jesus, Jesus brought revelation. So now we find Jesus contending with the Sadducees and the Pharisees and all of those people because they come from book knowledge yeah. and not practical spiritual knowledge. Yeah. And Jesus said often, he says, well, that's not what Moses meant. This is what he meant. So now it's being revelated. In any industry that we can get into, God brings revelation. I don't care what, what job you have. I don't care what you do. In emergency management, God blessed me to have revelation. And a lot of people couldn't receive it. It became a, a, a point of contention of jealousy. Well, he's right, just right. trying to always change stuff. No, no, I'm trying to grow you and we're going to mature in this. Right. And I've learned that everybody can't run together. So sometimes I just have to really, you have to learn to keep your mouth shut yep. because everybody's not on the same sheet of music mm -hmm. and it's okay. But now I have to learn to humble myself. And even though I have the answer, I wait and see if the answer comes out. And then this is what I say. So is that what we're going to do? Or do we have other alternatives? No, no, I think we'll go with that. And then I'll process it in my mind. Okay, that could work. There's a better right. way, but let's go with it. So once again, I humble myself. Yeah, yeah. And then they run with it. It works great. Mm -hmm. It got it achieved your goals. But if your goal was number one, and I was trying to take you to three, it's okay. You may get right. to three later on, but you achieved your <laughs> goal. You're taking more one. steps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. So so we find that in education, but it's linked to God. It's linked to the Holy Spirit and how God moves us. And to overcome these different mountains, you need an arsenal of resources. You need people in your corner. You need your own self-discipline. You need people to work with you and to be patient with you because you're going to make mistakes. But you got to be willing to sit and cry at times and wipe your eyes and continue yeah. to push forward. Mm -hmm. Right. Eat right. Your diet. Guess what? Plays a role in your education. If you're eating the wrong things and doing the wrong things, amen. Guess what happens? Your body says, I'm sluggish. I'm tired. You don't have the energy that you should have. Mm -hmm. Your mind becomes foggy. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So one of the things I did to educate myself and to build myself, take care of my temple. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. now I saw, I find I have more energy instead of running around, putting everything in my mouth. Right. Amen. You know, I find that my energy is boost, even though I had to go through a season of, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm hungry. And guess what? When I got on the other side of that pain, I found pleasure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So when we get on the other side of fasting, <laughs> we find deliverance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. We find <laughs> deliverance. And then it says in verse 10 is our last pillar. It says this, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. 
of wisdom. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of our education. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of our knowledge. The application of our knowledge, because if we honor God, we humble ourselves. If we honor God, we seek his face. If we honor God, he delivers because we're his children. Daddy, I don't understand. Remember what I said about my kids? Yes. I said, they said, Daddy, I don't understand. I said, I don't either. God, help me out. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I right. had to go to the father. Lord. <laughs> Lord, I, need, I need some help with this. Right? And he blessed. Right. And he blessed. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm, what I'm getting at, the fear of the Lord, that's the beginning of all wisdom. If we see God's face and, and the knowledge of the holy it says, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So mm -hmm. we will get the understanding because we walk holy, because we've been justified by the blood. Yes. So now we've been justified by the blood. Now I'm grafted in. I mm -hmm. am a child of the most high God. Mm -hmm. I am the seed of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the, the apostles and everybody else that has been across that line, according to Hebrews 11 chapter, right. this cloud of witnesses, right? Yeah. Why not me? You said in your word, God, you have no respect of person. Mm -hmm. Why can't I learn? Why can't you in, open my mind to this book, mm -hmm. to this, to that? Father, I have a desire, and I believe this is part of my assignment. Know your assignment. Mm -hmm. I believe this is part of my purpose. Know your purpose. Now, God, I need the tools. You said you're Jehovah Jireh. God, fill me. Be yeah. my provider. Give me the wisdom. Give me the knowledge. Give me the patience. Give me the resources. Connect me with the people. Connect me with the money. Mm -hmm. Capital. That I need. Capital. Father, I'll do the work. Mm -hmm. I'll sacrifice. I'll humble myself. And then when I get to that place, I get my doctorate, I get my master's, I get my business, mm -hmm. I get whatever I'm seeking, I'm going to honor you with it. Yep. Give it back to you. To God be the glory. My God. Woo. That's how we overcome this mountain of education. We have to apply it to God's word and follow the principles that God has laid out in amen proverbs 9 mm -hmm. has laid out in scripture and laid out in the men and women that are doing the work mm -hmm. not just hearers doers i want to follow a doer not a hearer yeah I, and you know what i i, I know we're, we're from the spiritual side but i i, I want to share something with you look at mm -hmm. all the success for the non-christians look at their success right you'll find the same traits it's a law. Hard workers, taking initiative, networking, mm -hmm. connecting with people, sacrificing their time and their efforts in order to build their craft. Bill Gates is one of the ones that I look at all the time. Yeah. He said he started in his garage, something to that effect. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Sometimes you may not start on the mountain in a big corporate office. You may be in your office, in your room, in your house. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? God will build your platform. That's what and he then when God, he builds your platform, he'll make room for your gift. And then he will bring people into your fold and you begin to feed them mm -hmm. instead of them feeding you. Mm -hmm. Amen. That is so powerful because I'm, I'm even sitting here thinking about when I came to Christ, um, one of the things that probably in like the first couple of months, someone called me out from the audience, um, and she was like, you, and I was like, you know, at the time I was a church girl that just wanted to come show up and leave. Like that was it. Yeah. So she called me and she was like, come. And she's like, I want you to join women's fellowship. And I said, oh boy, here we go. Now I got to interact with people. Like, what are we doing, right? So, okay. So she she puts me on Women's Fellowship. I agree. And in like two months, she's like, oh, Women's Fellowship is now in charge of praying every Tuesday night. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to faint. <laughs> and 
I wanted to pass out, right? But she gave us this book by Priscilla Shire um, on prayer and read through it. And I said, oh, this is like writing a paper in school. So I, I started to align my spiritual world with what I've gone through in my in in education and in like my work life. And I started to say, oh, write a prayer, like how you write essays. They taught you how to write essays. So you do introductions, you do, you know, the content in this paragraph. What are we gonna talk about? Okay, so this paragraph is healing. So everything healing we're gonna talk about. And that's how I pray now. I just correlate it to what I learned in school. So it imagine like not knowing God at all, not knowing anything about prayer. Imagine if I didn't even read Priscilla Shire's book and she just asked me to pray and she'd be like, you know, you got to add some scriptures and da, 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 da. God would have given me the, like he gave me that revelatory knowledge of, hey, the same way you write essays, just think of prayer like that. Just set it up in your mind that way and go through it. And now I'm teaching a class on prayer. <laughs> there you go. There you, you go. Know? But, <laughs> but this is all to prove your point of I sat, I, op- I made myself open to, you know, joining this ministry and prayer. I prepared myself. I said, okay, God, you gave me that went through some things with my prayer life it began to shift you know you learn how to fight you you know your hands learn how to to war and your fingers to fight you know you learn how to intercede you learn these different things and you're going through the cycles of prayer and then it's like i want you to teach on it now so now you take your experiences and put them into words and put it into a class and people go boom and you're like I thought everybody knew about this. <laughs> yeah, I thought everybody, I thought we all was on that. No, right? I thought we were all yeah. on the same page. But, you know, it's it's just going to, to, to validate your point of, you know, Proverbs 9. We just have to make ourselves available and we have to desire and hunger <laughs> after the things that we want. Yeah, and we, and, you know, we would look at wisdom, she does the work. You know, she does the work. And when we willing to do the work, put in the sweat, put in the time, Mm -hmm. you know, know, yeah, you went a little, you know, grudgingly into the women's (laughs) department. (laughs) You went a little grudgingly, but you did. Right. Right. But you did it. And so sometimes people don't just run in. My wife, she criticizing me saying, you're that type of guy. You just run. I am. But everyone's not like that. Yeah. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. But when you take those baby steps, it's okay. Take them. Incrementalism is a, is a powerful tool. Mm-hmm. You take your time yep. and then you grow and then you master that. Then you add to it. Then you add to it. Now you become the master. Yeah. Now yeah. you become the person that has the knowledge. Now you teach. Yeah. People come to you now yeah. for information. That's and how mind that- you, I never in, I think I might be embarrassed to say this, but in all of my education except for my master's I did not read anything when I tell you like history science any of that you taught me and it was just like it stuck it was like a sponge and I I just I was never the kid to study I was never one to like be in the book and like laboring over whatever it is we learned that day so when it came to the bible I said oh this is going to be a challenge (laughs) How do I study this? Now I got to read. Now I got to really read. (laughs) This is my life, (laughs) life or death. So um, I started to learn in prayer, ask God to help you, right? Give you the attention span needed to read the word. Let the word be absorbed into my mind. And then once that started to happen and I started to just read, I said, don't read and commit to like, remember, just read and get through reading so it can get inside you. And then once I got through the whole Bible, I said, okay, now I want understanding and I want the revelation and I want to know the history and how to align it. And that's where I am now. And it's just opened up a whole new way of reading the scripture. Like, I go, wait, I've read this passage like 17 times. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've never seen that or I've never caught that. 
So it, it's something to be said about asking him for the revelation or asking him to give you the desire, right? To read the Bible, to give you the desire to study how to build your business, to give you the desire how to go about constructing this class or whatever it is. Just ask him for the things and he'll give it to you. Yeah, that's what he says. And, and so if we ask, some people ask a miss, you know, do you really yeah. want that? No, they are not really there. They just kind of following the trend or whatever. Right. But for the ones who really want it, it's there. And right. so we got, to, we got to seek God's face, have that relationship. We're reading through the Bible right now, just like you said. Mm -hmm. I just want them to read just for awareness. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to memorize anything. Mm -hmm. just, just read through it literally just just read through each chapter right uh, so she's uh doing a wonderful job she reminds everybody i'm like Ooh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm okay <laughs> <laughs> you know reminds everybody because it, it's long right we just yeah. finished the book of genesis and we're moving through the scriptures and everything but the point is now you got an understanding now the word is in you now god is going to build upon that word that you subliminally put in you yeah yeah it wasn't a word that you put in you that you all said oh i remember that no 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 you place it in the back of your head. Yeah. And now God is saying, I'm going to recall that. I'm yeah. Recall. He brings back to your remembrance. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And now you build upon that. Now you have content. Yeah. You get to say, oh, Romans 9, Genesis 6, mm -hmm. Genesis 1 and 26. You, right. Now you get to build on that. And that takes time. Some yeah. people have the ability, like you said, you know, they can sit back and just get information. I was that guy that was crying in school, reading real slow. Lord, <laughs> help me. Right. I'm that guy. But guess what? I, I had to commit myself to read. Reading. And, and, you know, I will listen in class, but it took me listening in class. Right. <laughs> All right. Trying to take notes <sighs> and then still going home and reading, reading it. One o'clock, two in the morning, mm -hmm. right? And then, but I made it. I that's made it. it. I'm here today, and God has blessed me. That's probably why I got all this great. All this great. <laughs> Wisdom. <laughs> yes, right. Because I went through the fire, and I was willing to go through the fire. Yeah. And I know, according like we find Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Jesus will be with you in the fire. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about Pharaoh. You don't have to worry about the kings. You don't have to worry about those who are pointing fingers at you and calling you stupid and dumb. Right. And you know they called the disciples. They said these are, uh, when they got filled with the Holy Ghost, unlearned men. Mm -hmm. They called them unlearned. Yeah. You know, because mm -hmm. they had a certain dialect. They wasn't all polished like everybody right. else. Right. right. So we can be unlearned, but now they're educated in the word. Yeah. Yeah. So they're scholars in the word. We find now Paul. Woo! If we're going to have a prime example of somebody who studied the word and built a foundation, was dedicated to the foundation which he built. Remember, he was a Pharisee and yeah. he learned the word according to the way that the Pharisees present the law. And then on top of that, he was he was the type of person to go out and, and persecute those who was against it right <laughs> and now we find him god is using him just like you just said mm -hmm. god is using him now for christian for as a christian to help build the gospel he yeah. took what he knew he takes what you know and then you apply it you learn in school how to write an essay now mm -hmm. in scripture you learn how to write a prayer and mm -hmm. build upon that foundation same right. thing happened with paul yeah. same thing happens with us all so you can find a person who's been educated doing uh, neuropsychology, <laughs> but God saves him. And now we have mental health in our field. Mm -hmm. Now we got people who understand what bipolar means, schizophrenia means. Yeah. And we find somebody running around thinking they got the Holy Ghost. No, man, you just need a pill. <laughs> 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 right? It's right. true. It's so true. We, we understand how to do things in decency and order. Yeah. So yeah. It, it takes the body of Christ, the fivefold ministry, men and women. This is I'm trying to remember this preacher's name, and I ah I shoot myself for not remembering his name. But he revelated my mind when Jesus picked up the ear of once Peter cut off that mm -hmm. soldier's ear, right? He said, when he picked it up, he placed the ear back on to the man's head, <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. he said, that's the fivefold ministry. You know, we, the prophets, the teachers, the preachers, and the apostles, and I'm missing one, oh, God. evangelists. <laughs> evangelists. <laughs> so 
when he, when he took those, that's what's going to bring forth the word so people can hear. It takes all of that. Mm. So people can hear the word of God. When the enemy tries to cut you off and trying to, to discourage you, yeah, guess yeah. what? We got the fivefold ministry. We got the power of the Holy Ghost to bring back and put back mm. the redeemer of time, right. the redeemer of anything that you want back onto you so you can hear, so you can receive. And that's what church is for. And when we find churches who are not educating themselves, mm -hmm. find churches are being legalistic and worried about what you wear versus a, a who you are and where your heart right. is and all these type of things, we fail. Yeah. They, they need to hear prophecy. They need to be taught. They need the preacher too. They need to be pastored. Yeah. They need all these things, right? So, so it takes the full, full ministry and God blesses, you know, those who yield themselves, God will use pastors and preachers and teachers and ministries in all those areas so that we educate ourselves. So that our, our according to Hosea 4, right? It says our people perish because of what? Lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So ministers, preachers, teachers, elders, evangelists, uh, people out there, guess mm -hmm. what? We have to educate ourselves so our people won't lack. Yeah. So our people won't lack. Yeah. That is so powerful. Just thank you for sharing on this mountain. Um, I think the wisdom that came through this this um, broadcast is going to be powerful enough for people to, uh, I, at least I pray for them to get up and go. Um, I just want you to close out in prayer and then I'll pray for you and then we'll go forward. Amen. I just asked for one thing. Send mm -hmm. me a copy because I want to hear what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear what the Lord said through me. Amen. <laughs> uh, you know, people laugh when I say that. I said, man, you just don't know. God be downloading. And I, I teach the ministers, you got to learn to hear and speak. Revelation, right. Revelation as you speak, as you're teaching. Right. Yeah. Because he brings it to you. Mm -hmm. And right. guess what? It empowers the people. And now I go back and I say, what did I say? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I have to listen too. I sit yeah. back and I listen. So, and I practice what I preach. Right, right. right? That's so good. we practice what we preach. So mm -hmm. let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for this time. God, I yield everything to you and only you, God, could do this. So Lord, we submit to you today and we thank God for everything that you said through us. Father, continue to move. Thank you for this platform with Sister Joy, oh God. Continue to use her. Help her ministry to grow, oh God, to touch the men and the women of this world and the platform that you place uh, in her heart, oh God, to grow and to expand and to be an avenue for her finances, oh God, to contribute so we can continue to do the ministry together. Father, I'm joined at the hip with my sister, oh God. We have a mutual friend, oh God, that just won't go away. <laughs> and we love her, God, in the name of Jesus. So we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I just wanted to close out in prayer for you and then um, I'll do my closing spiel. So, Father, we thank you for Pastor Carly. We thank you for his labor of love. We thank you, God, that he committed his hands to the plow to go and find the word for the people of God today. We thank you, Lord, that he spent time in study, that he hid the word of God in his heart. God, that he opened himself up to you in intimacy so that he can speak revelational knowledge today. God, so we ask that you would pour back into him everything that he poured out this morning. Father, that you, Lord God, would be the, per the, the, the person that gives him increase right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. We pray right now over his household that is blessed, that it is covered, that the peace of Christ and the blood of Jesus watch over them and keep them. Father, today is the day that we thank you for everything that his hand touches, that it shall prosper, that everything that he's committed to build, that you will see him through, that every idea, every assignment that you've laid on his heart, every desire, oh God, that you would send the resources, you would send the capital, you would send the help, you would send the laborers, right? now in the name of Jesus, God, that he is committed 
to seeing your kingdom flourish here on earth. So God, we ask a blessing over him that you keep him in his mind, keep him in his body, keep him in your perfect peace, strengthen him in his inward parts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So thank you guys for joining us this morning to hear what the Lord had to say, the pouring out of wisdom. Study Proverbs 9. Maybe you'll even get more revelation, but you have to do your part too, right? Just like we said. So go forth, do great things in God, and join me next week for the last Saturday in Declared in the New Year. See you next week at 6 a.m. Tell somebody.